This is a homebrew podcast. Uh, Lucian, Lucian, I I got another letter that's uh, addressed to you. Uh, it's from someone I actually recognize, so I went ahead and opened it and read it. I hope I hope that's uh, all right. Anyway, here it I is. I must say, I'm somewhat nervous at this point. We've received so many at this point, and they haven't been that kind to me, Hildegard. No, they they certainly. Why why would you have been so? Uh, well, I don't. I mean, as a strong word, why you gotta be so rude? I think is the phrase I'm looking for. Uh, um, wow. First off, how dare you? Second, who is it from, Hildegard? Well, it's from uh, Peter Jones. I met him once when he oh! traveled through New Village, uh, back when I had a village. Actually, I'm quite fond of Peter Jones. I spent quite a bit of time in one of their establishments several years back. Quite a lovely place, in fact. What did the letter say? Well, um, it, it expounded at great length about your performances and how you, uh, Lucian, it, it seems that you got their, um their latrines and their kitchens reversed in your thinking which like how do you make that mistake how many drinks have you had oh uh, at a certain point we stopped counting this is a mistake to make what it, harlow what <laughs> this one gets it looks over to harlow i know you when you had as many drinks as it takes to make that mistake it's an easy mistake to make Sometimes the answer is just yes. And unfortunately, I yes and a little bit too much that evening. It sounds like it. I think we need to go back on your uh, your second apology tour. We need to be sure to go to Peter Jones's uh, place. Did did you even apologize the first time around? I feel it's like strictly... you just said you did. No, no, no. It's strictly one form of apology per tour, right? And there was a number of things I had done. I will go back the next time for the latrine incident. What else did you do? Well, I mentioned I had been spending quite a bit of time at their establishment. Yes, so much time, in fact, that some other local hooligans maybe believed that the establishment was mine, family. I may have come in and tossed the place because I owed them some money. I apologize uh, well, for that. Is that not good I enough? I can't really blame you for that one. At least you apologize for that. That's good. Anyway, uh, thank you for the fan mail, uh, Peter Jones. We, we will be back with our... Um, contrite offerings of sincerity please let us know that family is still bothering you hello everyone welcome back to mythcraft the podcast uh let's go around and meet our rescuing rebels starting with andy fuck <laughs> <laughs> that's not your character leave it name. at that leave it at that <laughs> yep <laughs> Rena, I'm not quite sure what this plan is or who these people are. Hollow's gonna owe me a lot after this. And Kiris Mara, I probably should not be the one on lookout for Empoderian, considering I'm the only one he would recognize. Cody. Old man Hollow, just waiting to get rescued at this point. I knew it would work if I just laid around and did nothing. Got in a good workout. At Rumpel Floor, um, I'm pretty sure we're gonna get caught. I don't think we're going to succeed, guys. Um, this plan is crazy, and I can't find any mushrooms. Mel. Thorn, I have no idea what is going to happen tonight. Today. What time is it? <laughs> 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 and Thistle Featherfoot, mission breakout. Nathan. Hail to God. <laughs> uh, now I know what the crow calling means. It's time for the entire flock to crow. We're getting out of here. To call. We're leaving. Ah! <laughs> Was that a bird? And Tomek, <laughs> mission breakout. We're going to do this. Roger. Lucian Del Wary. It's time for the big show. And Tildvi Lucinari. There's only so much research one can do. It is time to act. And Tanner. Gordon Blue. All right, let's do this. And Sherman Oriot. More friends, and now it's time to go. And, uh... I'm your MC, Nathan. Uh, obviously, I'm uh, not carried in due to, to some unfortunate like life circumstances. Things happen. Carried in is not able to continue with us for the time being. So I am stepping in as MC. Obviously, that raises a lot of questions in terms of like what's going to happen to Hildegard and Toman, because I generally think that DMPCs mess up party dynamics. We're going to go with it tonight. 
we will see uh, what happens with my PCs in the in the future, provided that they survive, uh, whether they become like recurring NPCs or what. All that to say, we will be uh, continuing Mythcraft, the podcast, with me at the helm as the Mythcrafter for the foreseeable future. There will be a brief hiatus between this episode and uh, the start of season two, as it were. So uh, last, well, last week was the interlude, but last time, Ooh. chronologically, the heroes <laughs> prepared <laughs> to uh, break out the uh, prisoners in the Tiberian prison uh, underneath the palace. So let's just kind of round table real quick. Let's recap what the plan is. I know that uniforms and dining carts are involved. Hildegard has a set of keys to her own cell, which would have been great four episodes ago. <laughs> uh, and uh, Curious has some some stuff going on. Thorn has Thorn has a lot of stuff going on. Let's let's kind of figure out where we're at. The pieces are set, as Telvio Illusionari would say. So let's figure out what pieces we're going to move. Well, this plan is ridiculous. Let's just start there. <laughs> <laughs> Calling it a plan is is some pretty firm language. I think the the first step was to get Gordon and Rumpelforp in the kitchen to just poison. Food. I forgot about the food poisoning. That's right. <laughs> Someone was looking, somebody was cooking, and somebody was booking, was my yeah. understanding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the cooking part of the plan is mm-hmm. Gordon <laughs> and uh, Rumpelflorp trying to give people food poisoning. Yep. The booking part of the plan, is that specifically Telveul as a book, or is that we're getting out of here, we're booking it? <laughs> I, 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 th- I think it was just the next best word that rhymed. <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, there's two very applicable ways that you could use that <laughs> yes. word. Um, Just say okay, yes. Okay, so let's say the the booking part of the yes. of the Wait, plan is, is getting people right. We, we get arrested. Oh, there's a fourth. We book a hotel. <laughs> hotel Travaco, not sponsored. Okay, so I, we've got the the dining cart with the uniforms that we're going to pass out to the. Uh, okay, we have to get the uniforms. Have to get the uniforms. Put mm-hmm. them on a dining cart. Sneak them into the prison hand them to the prisoners Mm -hmm. who all of the guards know what they look like, but we'll, we'll get there. (laughs) I'll shave my beard off. You're going to be food poisoned, Nathan. Get up on the plane. Hey, yeah. Calm (laughs) calm down, MC. Yeah, yeah. They're all going to be food poisoned. (laughs) All right. Here's the idea. I shave my beard off and then I glue it on Hildegard's face. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yes. And I imagine, like, have you seen those, like, videos of people with like the viking beards that shave them off and they look like 20 years younger yes. it's like a 40 year old it's that guy in the cell you shouldn't be in there excuse me sir can you let me out of this cage <laughs> <laughs> young oliver mm-hmm. i think Kyrus and thistle were going to be a lookout to make sure that emperor nerian wasn't coming around mm-hmm. and then rena was going to go get the uniforms I don't fucking know what Lucian has planned to do. Yeah, Lucian was you, Lucian was explicitly told to one stop calling himself lubrication and to two stay out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so Lucian will be part of some part of this plan. Then I think Shermy was being Shermy. Yeah, Shermy was. Um, was Shermy in? I don't think Shermy was in the room where we were talking he about. He wasn't the plan. in the Rena room. <laughs> no, but right. I think I do think that that plan was discussed when they were talking with the prisoners that they'd be looking to do that. So he would have a general idea, have a general idea, but he, he'd he be waiting for again, like, Hey, dinner time. That's my cue. I'm going to, I'll scoop up this car and you know, like every, like every other day I'll hand out dinner and uniforms. I honestly don't remember what Toman said he would do. I think it makes the most sense for him to be part of the lookout crew or one of the people that's handing out uniforms. Um, he can look professional. That's about all he's got going for <laughs> in this situation. And uh, Hildegard and Harlow and Thorne, I don't think were part of the direct planning. No. no. But the beard shaving plan is legit, I think. Is a What are you going to shave with? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> Would you ask? <laughs> well, actually, that brings up today's uh, video sponsor, Manscaped. That's what I'm <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've got the Manscaped 5.0. <laughs> For legal reasons, that is a joke. 
Unless. Um, okay, I think let's go through uh, and uh, just kind of montage a few different skill checks to represent how the different plans are progressing, the degrees of success uh, to which the different groups are having. To start, I'd like for uh, Gordon and uh, yep. Rumpelflorp to each make a check to uh, present yourself in such a way that you look like you belong, because neither of you <laughs> naturally do. That could be uh, intelligence or charisma. I've got deceiving. Deceiving, that's great. <sighs> yeah, <I> don't <laughs> Not with the one you don't. <laughs> Yeah, yes. Rumble Floor like walks into the kitchen, starts opening up cabinets, looking through the shelves, <laughs> banging around a bunch of pots and pans. You do have a plus ten, but that wasn't that one. So <laughs> some of the uh, uh, kitchen staff look over at you, and uh, the first one says, "Excuse me, excuse me. Why why are you going through the cabinets? You're you're wearing a prison guard uniform. Shouldn't you be guarding the prisons?" And then the next one says, why is such a, why is that a prison guard? <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 we don't tell you how to do your job. Don't tell, uh, Rumpelflorp, don't listen to them, all right? Uh, we're here to, uh, uh, you know, we're just getting the lay of the land. We just wanted to uh, to help out. And Rumpelflorp's actually got a, a whole heap of talents. Rumpelflorp, show them. Yeah, I'm just looking to see where you keep all the stuff. Why do you need our stuff? Uh, it, it doesn't really seem appropriate. Like, you tell us what you need and we'll cook it. That is our job, uh, as the other one was saying. Who's the cook? I'm the cook. Uh, I don't know about that. Prove it! <laughs> I think we need a cook-off. Uh, Gordon, can I get, like, a, a charisma check from you? Yeah, so would savoir faire, how do you say that? Savoir, savoir faire. You say it as well as I can. That, okay. Yes. Savoir faire. Savoir faire. Okay. Savoir faire. Ooh, yes. Nice. 25. Nice. Maybe. Could, what I would like to have done while I was also trying to get Rumpelflorp to uh, do a jig or something to uh, uh, distract them, <laughs> would I be able to let uh, Schnitzel, my ferret, down like sneakily to go you know, do nasty ferret things in the food as way of like, hey, this is how we're getting our sickness in there. Because I think if you eat ferret poop, you're probably yeah, going to get sick. Fecal you matter tends to do something <laughs> bad to you. Yeah. <laughs> it's only one ferret. Yeah, you're with your savoir ferret uh, check. You uh, <laughs> got a twenty-five on that. I would like for you to make a, a a secondary check. This can either be intelligence or dexterity to misdirect from your ferret. Um, okay. You look more like you belong than Rumpelflorp. Intelligence or dexterity? Okay, I don't have any cool intelligence skills that would work here, so it's just a flat roll. Not bad. Sixteen. Not bad. All right. So they uh, seem not to notice the uh, ferret, uh, and this is a witch familiar, so it has a bond with you and it can follow like your mental commands and whatnot, right? It, it's not like mm -hmm. Petrie. Yep, it is, yeah, yeah, uh, witch familiar. Okay. No disrespect to Petrie, but the, yeah. the ferret can <laughs> do a little bit more. All right, so I, you know, I think, I think you managed to spin um, Rumpelflorp's crit fail because they're fully focused on him and they're like in an argument with him now, right? <laughs> And, uh, yeah, the ferret is able to uh, weasel its way into the food and, and cause nice. some, some some mayhem. Elsewhere, we've got Thistle and uh, Curious attempting to look professional and keep an eye out for Nirian. Mm -hmm. Okay. Savoir faire would make sense here. Military would make sense here. In general, charisma or, again, charisma or intelligence. Uh, aw awareness, I think, would work as well. That's a 25. Okay. Would you allow something from awareness, like perceiving, perhaps? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perceiving would work. And I got an 18. Thistle does not look as at home in uniform. Kyrus does. Kyrus looks like a natural in, in, in uniform. So uh, people are generally just kind of accepting Thistle without too much, like, without, without second takes. And Thistle... While while Curious is looking the part, Thistle is looking around the uh, 
halls, keeping an eye on everything. So with this light, I think you clock the uh, regular intervals every 30 minutes or so of guards that are going on kind of their rotation, and uh, you uh, hear uh, occasional snatches of conversation from the throne room. You'd be at like the base of the staircase that leads up to the big throne room in our in like our espionage briefing. We were told don't go up those stairs, that's where Nerian is. Would I be allowed to roll eavesdropping to see how much of that I could catch? Yeah, sure. With a nine with might be a hard to hear. nine I mean it sounds like military plans. I don't think I'm gonna give you more than that. It's stern professional voices at like Generally at, like, kind of a speaking tone, occasionally rising to be heard over one another. Okay. Yeah, it sounds strict and professional, um, heated at times, but not, like, a full-blown, what's, I'm blanking on the word. Argument. Sure. Yeah, yeah, not not a full-blown, like, argument. Now, this goes on for a couple hours, you're just kind of keeping tabs on people. When, uh, the uh, doors from, uh, the top of the staircase swing open... And you hear a, uh, you hear footsteps descending at a professional clip. Uh, you could both turn and see a human in his late thirties, early forties, wearing a crisp Rashalani uniform, completely decorated with medallions and uh, pendants signifying great rank. His features are. Severe. He's got like the hollow cheekbone look kind of going on, like Grand Moff Tarkin, but young. And uh, uh, he's got the uh, whole like youth pastor soul patch goatee thing going on. But <laughs> aside from that situation, he looks very professional and very put together. He uh, briefly kind of nods at you, salutes at you as he moves past you, but otherwise doesn't engage in conversation. Before he departs, Curious, can you make an intelligence check at history if you have it? I don't. <laughs> but I have law, like, military. Uh, I'll, I'll accept that. It's a 14. You would uh, recognize this as one of uh, Emperor Nerian's sons. This is Prince Gallus. Great. His uniform, I mean, all Rashalani uniforms have a lot of red. His also has a lot of white and gold, signifying his um, royal status. Interesting. Kyrus is going to step away from the staircase, just in case Nerian pops his head out. Okay. Making sure she does not want to be recognized, and so she'll just sh shuffle, basically, so she's just out of sight. This whole time, also, while she's here for a couple hours, she's trying to pinpoint out the uh, ones she would refer to as weaklings in order to know what guards she can already start to just, like, assert her dominance over and put herself mm. in a place of like if I yell at them or give them commands they will probably listen to me even though I'm new. Do you have uh, the leadership skill? I do. Alright, I'd love a leadership check. That's a 16. Okay, yeah. You spot several likely candidates to be to be bossed around. <laughs> Fantastic. You also spot some that would not respond well to cajoling. So you, you get a little bit of a lay of the land there. Nice. At this time, is Rinna just kind of recovering from the events of the past day? It's like evening at this point. I believe the plan was to do the jailbreak post dinner time after the uniforms have been acquired and passed out. Uh, Rena is actually going to get the uniforms. So Rena would pull along Toman, since Toman is as large as intimidating. And Rena would pull her rank here, since okay. they are currently without a commander. Right. So she would be specifically putting herself in that role as she's temporarily been in before and basically just pulling Toman along to scare people and trying her best to just get some uniforms. Ideally, she'd like to just like let herself in and like steal them, but... You know, this is a well-oiled war machine, so there mm -hmm. is going to be a person that you'd like fill out a requisition form with. Because again, like we, uh, during our strategizing last last uh, two sessions ago, we uh, discussed how they, uh, like, you turn in a set of clothes mm -hmm. and then they, they give you a new one. So given that Rinna is outside of this and is able to exert a little bit more authority due to her role in the um, arena, I think we can still manage that. So I will roll uh, 
a menacing check from Tomin just to look tough. And I'll have you make a charisma check on uh, Rena's behalf. 17 from Tomin. 11 from Rena. I think with with Tomin kind of backing Rena up, the uh, clerk is more amenable to Rena, but is not willing to uh, go out of the standard uh, order of operations in this. I understand that, that you need this, but you understand uh, Rashalani regulations. I It would be malpractice for me to go against them at risk of losing my job. I'm sorry, but bring me the uniforms that you wish replaced and I will do them. I'll take care of that immediately. Okay. It's your head when we get to this. I have to meet with all of them tomorrow. Do you forget that I have to meet with all of these new people? Well, yes, but it doesn't seem expedient to worry about what the, the little fish in the pond are worried about. Well, the little fish in the pond are going to grow up to be big fish in the pond. You got to take care of the natural now. What she said. Do I look like a little fish? No, but even as clerk, I do outrank you. Huh. There's just kind of an awkward <laughs> stare off. We're going to say this clerk is a halfling too, so it's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> now, darling, listen. We're going to be getting a new commander soon, right? And you're going to want to be on their good side. Right, which is right. why I think it's a good idea to do things the right way. Now, what's going to happen? I, obviously, I outrank you. And they're going to talk to me a lot more than they're going to talk to you. Now, what's going to happen when I tell them how you just did not not help me out when we were lacking a commander? Um, would you just, like... I don't know, sign a waiver or something. Like I'm I'm just trying to get my my Listen, why don't you just waved. walk away? Go get like a bathroom break. Okay, but I need you to leave first. So that I you know, I told you to go. You need to you need to go. And then yeah, I, I do need to go take a bathroom break. Alright. Toman's eyes are like in the back of his head. He's rolling his head so hard. <laughs> right, I'll just walk out around the corner. That Hip squeak is ridiculous. If we met on the battlefield, it'd be a toothpick. You hear loud footsteps, and then a door conspicuously creak and close. Yeah, it's just so stupid. And she's just gonna go back <laughs> and go in the door. Uh-huh. If it's locked, she's gonna lock big it. You know, it is locked, but it is not latched. <laughs> it's <laughs> propped against them. Oh, all right, she's just gonna go in and take the uniforms. Mm-hmm. So. One roughly sized to each of the three current prisoners. Yeah, and she's going to take one for herself as well, because she's not. She's currently in her cleric garb, and I think she's going to change over to more official garb, just in case she has to try to pull rank again. All right. And she's going to leave a note that just says, like, she's not going to, like, write a waiver or anything like that. She's just going to be like, this guy lost a lot of uniforms. Signed Rena. And like she's gonna hide <laughs> it in the uniform, so hopefully he doesn't find it right away. <laughs> and it could be found later. I'm just making a note that the halfling launderer is the next VPEG. <laughs> <laughs> I made that way more difficult than it needed to be. <laughs> so Telve is is still in the uh, what was did we give your house a name? Beige house beige cottage? Beige art house. <laughs> Beige art house, yeah. Yeah, the graffiti beige art house, yeah. So in preparation for this, I don't remember how in the loop Telve yeah. is on everything right now. Telve it is not aware of any of the inner workings of the plan inside the keep. However, for the past several weeks, Telve has been through his network getting access to various disguises and has been making drop bags all over the city on all of the routes that he has documented for the least uh, patrol the safest mm-hmm. routes he's got access to small wagons small carts a uh, number of crates with various types of uh, such like merchant apparel so it seems like you can switch between appearing like maybe a blacksmith maybe a fishmonger as you are going through different drop points through town so that there are checkpoints once they leave the keep on their way back to the house to make like seven costume changes if necessary. Okay. And uh, the book is currently in Thistle's possession? Yeah, in Thistle's possession. And last thing that had been kind of communicated with that, 
uh, after the party had arrived, and then he had also shared with Shermie that now that it's too hot, essentially, unlikely that there's going to be much conversation coming from the book. I'll be ready when you all make it outside of the keep. Mm -hmm. So Telve is just kind of getting contingencies ready. Yes, a number of contingencies. If one path fails, there's always another path to take. Okay. And during the uh, events of the late afternoon and early evening, what is Lucian up to? <laughs> oh, I, I thought you'd never ask, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> what is he lubricating and why? Oh, I, I, let, uh, let's me tell you. I Lucian, hope you'd never ask. <laughs> <laughs> Lucian does not want to be, uh, he feels embarrassed as to not having a concrete part in this plan. <laughs> and he wants to show that he also can accomplish something in this. So uh, gracious MC, if you will allow this, I would like to start uh, an illicit gambling ring somewhere with some of the other guards <laughs> of strip poker. And I want to get my own set of uniforms. Forms. <laughs> oh my <Okay>. god. <laughs> oh so you're no. setting up an illicit gambling ring over the course of four hours between making a plan and executing it. That's, no, 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 no. I, there was no plan that was ever made. This was just something that was birthed immediately. There was no thought whatsoever. <laughs> okay. Let's break this down into steps so I can figure out the checks. So you want to... I want to size. I want to size up marks. Mm -hmm. I want to put enough coin on the table and I want to use essentially uh, a combination of entertaining and sleight of hand for them to win quite a bit quite quickly. And then I want to cheat very hard to where they lose everything. And the only thing they're going to be able to offer me is to close off their back. Okay. So first, let's look for some kind of uh, awareness check to uh, pick some marks, find a good like off-duty guard lounge. I'm so glad that both Curious and Lucian were looking for marks, but for completely <laughs> different reasons altogether. I, I'm ready for you to say no, but will you please allow me to use eavesdropping as I'm listening for people who are talking about their gambling problem actively? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think that works. Thank you. <laughs> a 15. 15, okay. Yeah, you find a, a few people. I, I'm going to say you find a two possible marks so it's not it's not so successful that you might provide a uniform to everyone who needs one but should your gambit work you've got mm -hmm. two thirds mm -hmm. of the uniforms you need amazing next would be uh, setting up a game and flaunting enough wealth that you draw people into the game if possible i'd like to use a combination of some of my like forgery and disguise opportunities to like build this to it looks like there are titles and deeds and other things that i am offering up on the table forgery for sure i don't think disguising works there that's more yeah, apparel it'd be a 17 all right my my one question is like <laughs> you've you've got a tempting pot but yeah. you need yeah. a little bit of a crowd in order to draw a crowd right like mm -hmm. the, this isn't gordon blues bargain brews like you've, you've got to do <laughs> something to to bring people yeah. in this is a couple of okay let's let's go let's think about what these people want what these people desire i think i'm going to start talking less about money less about coin less about property and more about like shifts we're going to we're going to pivot the game we're talking about working other people's shifts for guard duties that they do not want i'm making a very big show of it and i'm willing to take all of the nights and weekends that nobody else wants i just need more people at this table you've got a crowd <laughs> yes. They're gambling the only thing they can. Years of service. Yes. <laughs> Alright, and now for the con itself. I I don't think there's a gambling skill. I think I made an oversight there. So what what kind of skill I offer either entertaining for the charisma side or sleight of hand for the like knowledgeable side of making the moves. Uh let's do entertaining followed by sleight of hand. Build okay. it up a little bit and then execute okay entertaining first that'll be a 30 <laughs> what? that'll be a nat, nat, nat 20, 20 for nice. a 30 <laughs> yep. oh my god you are very entertaining uh, unfortunately once they realize what has happened you will have to go on an apology tour that includes Tiberia but <laughs> we'll, we'll burn that bridge when we get there yeah sleight of hand what <laughs> another that's another nat 20 for a 29 on. 
So, in the <laughs> crowd that you amassed by offering to take, like, extra KP and whatnot, you now have six additional uniforms <laughs> that you have swindled <laughs> off of the backs of these soldiers. Wow, this has been a lot of fun, everyone. Thank you so much for your time and patience and for oh, all you gotta of your wonderful wins. you got to let us win this wins. back. I mean, what, am I supposed <laughs> to walk down the hall like this? Listen here, that's not my problem. <laughs> Toodles! And I take off. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Shermie. What does Shermie do in his downtime besides try to make friends with varying degrees of <laughs> failure? <laughs> yeah, so in Shermie's downtime... If he's not visiting with Alvric or Telve, he would be, he's kind of a stress ball given what is on the line for him in this mission to get everybody out safely. And he doesn't really know what's going on. And he would be very aggressively writing and erasing the perfect letter on crane paper but not knowing who to send it to. So he would be, you know, writing up something to send to General Tovald. To Daddy T. Kind of like Daddy filling T. him in, <laughs> letting him know, yeah, he, he writes Daddy T and the cr- crane paper's not flying and he's like... <laughs> Your other so boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then like writing to, like thinking about something to write to Telve, like I, I should probably loop Telve into this, but again, I don't even know what to write to this. So he's just really kind of almost like pacing back and forth between standing up, sitting down, writing, erasing, standing up, pacing, sitting down, writing, erasing waiting for really his duties in, in dinner time to <sighs> waiting for his dinners uh <laughs> oh, no <laughs> waiting for his duties in <laughs> dinner time trying to remain inconspicuous okay i think we will fast forward to the uh, dinner shift now so those of you that have procured uniforms will get a chance to pass them off to shermy and uh shermy can uh successfully deliver the meal and the uniforms. Um, Shermie has typically been the only one to do the dinner round, so I'm, I'm not even going to ask for, like, rules on that front. Cool. So, Hildegard and Harlow and Thorn acquire these uniforms. Nice! This, uh, I suppose I'll do what's necessary. I don't want one of these on me, but it'll get us out of here. So, where is everyone else waiting are you all trying to leave together? Or do you plan on communicating some kind of rendezvous point? If so, then uh, if another guard or two want to join uh, Shermie's shift to communicate that information. There's no shift leader right now. There's no prison guard leader right now. So pulling that would be pretty easy. I guess a quick question as we get into the next part of this plan. I can't help but imagine that the guards probably also eat in shifts. Like there's probably like different times in the mess hall or something like this. So if it's possible and we think it's necessary, I think I would send Lucian to go and essentially get servings and get serving platters and trays and to bring food around to the other active guards who wouldn't be the ones who were going to the mess hall to get dinner at that time. Because there's always going to be some people who aren't eating. Try to spin it as like, hey, it's like really good tonight. Like, you're going to love this. We're, they got so much. I'm bringing it around to everybody and just like mm-hmm. go make deliveries around around the keep. So everybody okay. gets I a taste. I also think Rena would suggest she would just go around and tell people their shift changed. Mm, yeah. Okay. Nice. Just we're doing it differently until we get a new commander your these people and just pick the cur- like our current party these people are on current shift you go eat Perfect. they'll stand here i'd like a charisma check from both of you i have a great addition to that but i'm not there can i offer you persuading uh yes it's a 12 for rena 26 for <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> all right <laughs> god Let's see, Rena was not the one looking for marks, so she comes across some people who have been around for a while and are like, I'd rather just keep my own shift. And- oh, the food is delicious? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Between Rena successfully like cajoling the uh, less strong-willed people and uh, Lucian um, getting to the stomachs of everyone else, you're able to kind of clear the room out. They say the quickest way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Hmm. A secret that Lucian knows very well. It needs lots of lubrication. It is known. 
<laughs> I, I was oh I was honestly going to say that as as Rena is like maybe stumbling over that Lucian just walks by and just whispers lubrication <laughs> and he keeps on walking. <laughs> The food itself was not, like, Rumpelflorp was not able to get close enough to do anything to it. Yeah. But Rumpelflorp served as an excellent distraction for the uh, ferret. Uh, schnitzel, right? Schnitzel, yep, schnitzel the ferret. Schnitzel took a schnitzel. Thanks, <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that happens. People ingest a, <laughs> uh, a grand amount of uh, fecal matter and... Uh, Quickly <laughs> come to Jesus regret. Christ. May I have a luck check from uh, Rena and Shermie and Thorn? Oh, that's not good. Why? It's a 12, keeping consistent with the 12s. Yeah. It's a 2, <laughs> keeping consistent with the 2s <laughs> being in a number. Ooh, Ooh nice. a 17. Okay. Thorn would be uh, aware given her questionable allegiances of a uh, hidden servant's entrance that is not far from the uh, prison exit within the palace. So that is just an extra method by which you could get from the palace onto the grounds surrounding the palace. Whether Thorn chooses to share that or not is obviously totally up to Thorn. All of the party members will be aware. In order to get to the beige graffiti art house from the prison, uh, you'll need to get from the prison into the main palace, from the main palace into the royal grounds, from the grounds into the main city, through the city to the slummy suburb of the city, and then you can get the hell out of Dodge, get through the portal. That's a lot of sneaking. Obviously, Anyone aware of Telve's supply drops are going to be able to, you know, use disguises a lot more effectively. So Shermie probably would be aware. Uh, Thistle might be aware from the book uh, communication. Where are the training grounds on this route? The uh, training grounds would not be directly on this route. Okay. I think everyone would be vaguely aware of this, but people who have been to the training grounds and Rena, of course, would be mm -hmm. would have a much better sense of it. In the uh, grand like scheme of Tiberia, the uh, palace is kind of toward the center southeast side of the uh, city. The training grounds are west of it, and the uh, beige art house is northwest of it. So you wouldn't necessarily go past the training grounds gotcha. to get there. There are lots of residential areas between the palace and uh, the uh, the house, there are a few commercial areas, marketplaces, town squares. There's actually a couple public parks as well. Um, so kind of a variety of terrain as you're going through. At this point, we're moving into like actually walking out. So the prisoners have their uniforms on. Speaking for Hildegard, Hildegard has her uniform on. I'm assuming Harlow and Thorn do. Yeah, yeah like assuming that we're, we have the signal to like get ready to go. Because the uh, prison has been cleared out Thanks to uh, your charm and your poop, the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the party can kind of collude with one another. Like, if you if you all want to go down into the cell, you should be able to do that without being detected at this point. I would think, I imagine it, that everybody's kind of set up on posts, and as we're leaving the cells, we're just, like, picking up and falling in line. You know, it's like Shermie and whoever passing out the uniforms, getting out, and then we, you know, as we walk back to that hallway, two more set up there, they join the pack, move, 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 and pick up until we're ready to just blast through. We also have the other prisoners that are in, in a different hall, mm -hmm. so we'd probably be, be split getting those two. Two groups meet somewhere in the center. Yeah, mm -hmm. meet in, like, the, uh, kind of the intake area, let's say... I don't think we ever saw this specifically in the castle layout, but let's say that there's like the prison wing and then you go up a floor and there's the, the warden's office. You've got like the files on like notes on all of the prisoners, old man with dietary problems, etc. And uh, you right. go up a floor from that and then you're back in kind of like the main castle. So as uh, Shermy and uh, the others bring the prisoners out of uh, the jail cells, starting with Hildegard because she's in the back and then Thorn and uh, Harlow. 
And as the other group grabs the remaining prisoners, the corgi that likes finger foods and spaghetti, the half-elf, I believe, survived, a variety of humans survived, Hildegard is intent on uh, seizing this opportunity. We're out. The guards are down. He's not expecting it. Let's find Narian and let's put an end to this. What do you mean you say end? Let's not. His son is here, Hildegard. Okay, well, we can kill him too. Chop off the head of the snake, burn Rochelle onto the ground. We're not doing that, Hildegard. That's suicide. We're here to get you out. Well, I, what, what if I don't want to get out? What if I want to just make them pay for what they've done? I understand that urge, but that's not what we're here for. Hildegard, please, we've come so far. We can go home. Thistle, they destroyed your home. We're not powerful enough yet, Hildegard. You saw what he did. Hildegard, you still owe me my eggs. Uh, we're we're going to argue about eggs at a time like this? We are 100% going to argue about eggs. I gave you one responsibility. You heard her, you kid. to follow through on that I, responsibility I don't even know before you, you can start you another one. You stay out one. of it. Karis, we... We have a we have a shop. We need to take it. We don't have a shop, Hildegard. We require more training. Right now, we have a shot to get out of here, and I think we need to focus on that. I think that's right. We have to put our ambitions aside. And I don't want to risk losing you again, Hildegard. Yeah. Even if I was twenty years old, I would have a hard time with that fight, Hildegard. I, we're just not capable of it right now. Kid, I I like your spunk, but. That's that's not what we're here for. It's not going to work. You'll have your chance. This is not it. Heal to God, we all, well, not all, she'll look at the new, new individuals. Many of us are still drained from earlier in the pit. I do not have any capabilities left. Hollow is still bleeding from that stab wound from the other. Uh, d- I'm still not convinced it wasn't outside the pit. No. <laughs> we just, everybody's hurt. We cannot fight Nerian right now. We just don't, we're going in half prepared. There is a time and a place. It is, it's not right now, Hildegard. Let's be going then. <laughs> <laughs> what he said. I'll have what he's having. What is that? Oh. That's a rumble for him. Okay. Everyone should have one. They're quite splendid. There's something. He doesn't seem very useful, but I'm sure he serves some kind of purpose. <laughs> All right, before we get out of here, everybody check your coin purses, because Rumpelflorp's got sticky fingers. I've only got one place. Oh, Harlow, prison has changed you. <laughs> All right, well, then I'll check your coin pouch, if you know what I'm saying. I think we should... Leave instead of right. having this conversation right, <laughs> right here. Right. right, please. We'll have to have something pretty darn good up there. Maybe we'll do that. <laughs> so the group ascends the uh, stairway from the dungeon, leading the uh, other prisoners in tow. Five other prisoners have uh, survived, as the rest were, or as as four of them died in the in the pit. Thorn would be aware of the uh, location of the hidden passage. Would they disclose that to the rest of the group? Would you try to head for the uh, like main entrance? We're all in uniform right now, except for the. Actually, Dude, we've got enough. Uniforms. We've got enough uniforms. Everyone is in uniform we got one right to now. Spare. If you want, if you want to try to just <laughs> we've walk got out, way too many uniforms. Right? Do we have enough uniforms to like free the other prisoners? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because yeah. Um, yeah, they're all Rena grabbed some. And uh, Lucian oh, got enough. Damn. Yeah, you're the... right with Lucian. Right. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, we won't have that many. But yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, man. Stick it to the man. There's guards posted at the front still, aren't there? There would be guards posted at the front. Uh, Lucian got everyone out of this wing um, to go eat and then the things that come after. Uh, and uh, that, that did not extend to the entire palace or obviously to the entire standing army in Tiberia. So there are still guards, there okay. are still hostels. You're just safe in this area right now. I think realizing that we're just walking straight for the front door, Thorn would kind of stop for a second and just say, are we, are we really going to walk right out the front door? What about the people, the guards posted out we there? We can kill him. Uh, Hildegard, I could, what? Uh, no, we could, uh, we can go ahead and talk to him, get distracted. I don't, they, we, 
a whole bunch of new guards just came, though. They're not going to think it's weird if a bunch go out at the end of the shift. It's an excellent point. Sometimes just making the most direct, plainest decision raises the least questions. They know me. They know Shermy. If you are confident, it will not be an issue. I'm not saying it won't be an issue. I'm just saying it's <laughs> the only choice we have. There could possibly be another choice. Okay, keep talking. I don't have time to explain how and why I know this, but there is a servant's entrance that is not seen and not guarded. It could be maybe a better option of getting out of here. I'm going to accept that for now, but I, f- I feel like we should talk later about how you and why you know that. I understand. That would have been great in my plan if we'd all escaped. I mean, I guess that's what we're doing now, so it works. Where, where does it take us? MC, remind me where it takes us. The uh, <laughs> passage would uh, take you uh, out to the uh, grounds. So there's like one of the main entrances to this wing of the palace. And then a little ways west of it, there's a like a groundskeeping house, like a Hagrid style kind of game hut and a bunch of like an orchard. And this connects the orchard to the halls that are near the kitchen. So it's just a way for servants to easily go out and quickly gather fresh food and then bring it into the kitchen to be prepared. I relay that information. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's got the, less, uh, the least amount of eyes. I'm with Hildegard. I think we should just go kill people. Thank you. Someone's reasonable here. Uh, seems rash. Uh, uh, yeah, no, reasonable. Th- Thank you, Curious. Th- have you ever played Source? <laughs> when there's a, a field card down, they get powered up. We need to. We don't want to fight them on their terms. There will be a time and a place. Right. If we alert them, they can escalate things. I'm with the Ketek on this one. Fine. I just want them to pay. I can wait. Find somebody, Hildegard. I can't believe I'm the one who's saying this. That we were asked to not make a scene. Again, I'm shocked that I'm saying this. I do feel like we've had a lot of close calls, and I think if there is a more quiet and potentially safer way to get out of this, I think we might need to play it a little bit safe this time. Yeah, and it'd be easier to beat up servants than guards. Lead the way, Thorn. And as they walk by... Curious is gonna give Hildegard a dagger. Thank you, Curious. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Go do some stabbing, kid. If Thorn is capable of casting magic, I'm actually not sure if you are or not. But handcuffs are gone, I'm not. so Hildegard is back. But Thorn and Harlow, if you have any magical abilities, then you are as well. Thorn was not lying when she said she couldn't do magic okay. before. <laughs> On the map here, I'm pinging the secret passage, so the party can head down the hall toward that area. If anyone's ever been to or seen like European palaces, there's like the hidden passages that are built into the walls to just look like part of kind of the wall paneling. Um, And that's just for servants to stay out of the way of the nobles. This is just kind of one of those situations, but Thorn knows exactly where it is and can open the door up for everyone. Beautiful. It's uh, just through here. I guess Rena will go first just to see if anybody's out there because nobody will think it's weird if she's right. walking out of the... Yeah. Shermie will follow in tow as well. Between Rena and Shermie, you would see uh, guards on the outer wall of the palace up ahead. They are just patrolling back and forth on the tower wall. Those are the only people you see. They do not appear to have noticed you. All right. Everybody, let's go. Act like you belong. Always. Especially you, Rumpel Four. Tomin will bring up the back just in case there's an ambush or anyone runs into us. Do we have our weapons on us? Those of us who came in as guards? Everyone, I think, has all of their standard gear on them at this point. Okay. The guard transfers certainly do. The prisoners, Shermie would know where all of their supplies was kept. Yeah, everyone, okay. everyone is equipped. Thanks to the sudden bout of dysentery elsewhere in uh, the castle, <laughs> that's, that's not an issue. I think Thistle might just have their bow ready and want to feel cool and important and take up the rear with Toman. Very cool. And important. Curious will probably just be near Lucian or Hildegard. Yep, Shermie sure will be walking with Renna to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just another day on the job. <laughs> Renna and Shermie, bring the new people out for a drink. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> is the plan to just say this is like Shermie's social hour and just walk through the front gate this way? 
I think by now most guards would know that Rena has been trying to make sure me friends. So I 100% think she's <laughs> playing that up of... Retta is bringing out the new guard recruits with Shermie, so Shermie can make more friends. Perfect. So the one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to have the three prisoners make a luck check just to see if these guards oh, recognize yeah. them. I don't like If that. the guards don't, then you all get through the front gate unimpeded. Would now be an appropriate time to roll an evading check? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll accept evading. Either... Intelligence or luck here. I got a 16. Not bad. Perfect. And the DC for this is not particularly high. People expect to see other people in specific contexts, right? So they're not necessarily mm-hmm. looking for these individuals. Can I have, like, uh, Schnitzel from Gordon crawl up on the shoulders of Hildegard and be a beard and <laughs> pretend to be a beard if needed? <laughs> it uh, will not be needed with uh, Hildegard's 31 luck check. <laughs> All right, luck. Right, right. Oh, my gosh. 21. Yeah. I'm just going to make a couple rolls real quick for the other prisoners. Ah! (laughs) We're not with them. We're not with them. Now, wait. Wait, before we get to those rolls, does this this plan potentially just work? Well, I was going to say the same thing myself. It seems like it's going much too simple smooth it's almost like everything's falling perfectly into place this is very unlike us what did you do i didn't see you the whole time well I, you know i make things happen i connect people i uh oh i should work on that i smooth things out with some type of properties which i'm unable to describe appropriately is this going to be more apologies later oh no but i just remembered something do you think I should take off my tambourine shoes before we escape? Is that is that what that noise been? I thought it was Rumble Fort. Has that been you this whole time? If you're the reason this whole plan fails. I, part, I mean, I will say this. I want this to be successful, yes. However, I do not want to sacrifice the aesthetic that I've built up for myself. I have a reputation to uphold, you know. Well, listeners, I apologize for Lucian and his tambourine shoes that are probably going to ruin this whole plan, but... I apologize for nothing. Due to the length of this episode you will have to wait until next week to find out who ultimately fucks it up probably hildegard murdering some poor individual with that tagger i gave her oh oops you might be right